Thank you for joining us for today's training on CACFP administrative reviews on how to use the e-review portion of CNP Web. Today I'm going to go over our general CACFP review cycle and administrative review process. Now we'll take a look at the review notification letter that we send out and all of the required documentation that you need to provide to us. Then we'll go step by step through the e-review portion of CNP Web so we can see what the e-review system looks like, how to navigate the e-review portion of CNP Web, and lastly, we'll cover some tips for success and helpful reminders. First, let's take a look at the CACFP review cycle and the process for choosing which programs we review each year. According to regulations, we must review at least 33.3% of total of the total number of institutions participating in the program as of October 1st. New programs are reviewed once during their first year of operation, usually sometime within the first six months. After that, we have a three year review cycle, so programs are typically reviewed once every three years, unless we find significant problems during your review, in which case we may be required to do a follow up review the next year. Follow-up reviews do not count towards your regular review cycle. For example, if you are reviewed this year on your regular three-year review cycle and we find significant problems, you'll likely receive a follow-up review next year. If everything looks great at your follow-up review next year, then when you would be reviewed again two years later after that. And that's because it will actually have been three years since your last regular three-year review. We are also required to review any programs that we determine to be higher risk. This is a result of a recent state audit that we went through. Factors that put a program into higher risk category include things like communication issues, missing claims, being issued a conditional license, repeat findings from your prior review, single audit findings on audit reports for programs receiving 750,000 or more in federal funds, as well as significant staff changes that occurred during the year. Starting with the upcoming 2024 CACFP agreement year, we'll be doing reviews completely within CNP Web. Some of you may already be familiar with uploading review documents in CNP Web, since that's how we collect review documents this year, and some of you may already be familiar with submitting a revised claim in CNP Web. This year, you'll also be able to track our progress on your review within CNP Web. Review reports will be generated by CNP Web, so they'll look a little different, and you'll be able to upload corrective action plans and corrections to corrective action plans within CNP Web as well. We're continuing with hybrid reviews next year. With hybrid reviews, some paperwork will be requested ahead of time, and then we'll come and review some paperwork and requirements on site at your facility. This method seems to be working really well for programs because it reduces the amount of time that we're on site. The program paperwork we request ahead of time will be uploaded into CNP Web, which we'll cover a little later in today's training. And then again, some paperwork and other requirements will be reviewed on site. When we review your program, we look at program records for one month of operation. Another change that we're starting this year is we'll be sending out all review notification letters for the upcoming agreement year. All of those letters have actually been sent out already. The review notification letters will be emailed or have been emailed to both the authorized representative and the food program coordinator identified in the sponsor application section of your agreement. We as state agency staff are required to do unannounced reviews, so it's important important that you do not tell site staff about upcoming reviews. Unannounced reviews give us the opportunity to offer technical assistance that addresses the needs of each site. The review documents we request ahead of time in CNP Web will be due by a certain date. The due date for the paperwork will be in your review notification letter. The review notification letter identifies the month of operation that we'll be reviewing and includes a list of all documents that you need to upload in CMP Web, as well as all the paperwork and requirements that we'll be reviewing on site. Once we start looking at your review documents, we'll reach out to you by email or phone call if we're missing anything or if we have any questions. As I mentioned, you'll be able to track our progress on your review in, in CNP Web, which I will de demonstrate a little bit later. 
Your review notification letter also identifies the site that we'll be visiting for the on-site portion of the review and the date of the on-site visit. We'll reach out with more details about the on-site visit once we get closer to the date of the on-site visit. As I mentioned, we'll be looking at some program documents on site. We'll also observe a meal service while we're on site. After the on-site portion of the review and after we've finished reviewing your program documents, we'll schedule an exit interview. We can do the exit interview as a video meeting or by a regular phone call, whichever you prefer. At the exit interview, we'll talk about all the great things we observed about your program, as well as any areas that need improvement and areas of non-compliance. If you are not compliant in any areas, we have to, if you are not compliant in any areas, we have to give you program findings. All program findings require that you write a corrective action plan explaining how you're going to fix the problem moving forward. Sometimes findings require us to take money back from your program. We talk about all of this during the exit interview, and then you'll receive a written review report by email that summarizes what we discussed during the exit interview. So the report will include good things we observed, the observations, and the findings, what we need for corrective action plans, and whether or not we have to take any money back. If you have findings of non-compliance, your review report will give you instructions for writing your corrective action plans, and it will also tell you the due date for the corrective action plans. You'll submit your written corrective action plans in CNP Web. If your plans need any corrections or more information, we'll let you know what is needed in CNP Web, and you'll submit correct corrections and additional information through the system as well. If you are required to return money to us, We'll have you file a revised claim in CNP Web, so the amount of your overpayment will be deducted from your next CACFP reimbursement payments. Your review report will tell you the due date for your revised claim and what figures to enter for your revised claim. Once all of your corrective action plans are complete and you filed a revised claim if needed, then you'll receive a review closure letter by email, which will officially close your review and your review will be marked as closed in CNP Web. Let's move on to the review notification letters. Here's a sample review notification letter. The review notification letter that we email you tells you the month of operation that we're reviewing, the person at the state agency who will be doing your review, and their contact information, and it tells you the date and location of the on-site portion of the review. For sponsors of family child care providers, the letter will also tell you the names of the providers that we'll be reviewing. Included with the review notification letter is a list that tells you exactly what program records we need you to upload in CNP Web and the due date for uploading these records in CNP Web. And the review notification letter also includes a list that tells you exactly what program records and requirements that we'll be looking at on site. Let's take a closer look at documents you need to provide to us and some of the program procedures and requirements that we look at when we come on on site. These are the documents that center programs must upload regarding their CACFP expenses for the month of review and the overall financial viability of their program. CACFP is a not-for-profit food service program, and your CACFP reimbursement must be spent on allowable costs. When we review your program, we need to verify that you are meeting all of these requirements. We do that by looking at your dated itemized receipts for food and non-food expenses, your CACFP staff payroll records and timesheets, and any food service contracts that you might have if you're a program that buys your meals from an outside business. If you're a larger program that charges a portion or a certain percentage of general expenses to CACFP, we'll also need to see information regarding how you determine the percentage charged to CACFP. To be eligible to operate CACFP, regulations require programs to be financially viable. So this means we also need to verify that your business is financially viable when we review your program. We verify your business financial viability by looking at your bank statements, credit card statements if you use them, and your business's profit and loss information for the month of review. 
These are the meal service documents that the center programs must upload into CNP web. We need to verify that you're meeting CECFP meal pattern requirements during your review. We do this by looking at your posted and portion menus for all age groups served, your manufacturer documentation to prove how commercial products like chicken nuggets and meatballs credit towards the meal pattern, your standardized recipes for homemade grains and mixed component dishes, your point of service meal count records, and your attendance records. Remember that different CECFP programs have different requirements. For example, at-risk after-school programs and emergency shelters do not have to complete portion menus, so those programs won't be submitting those documents. Review notification letter identifies differences in program requirements, but please reach out if you have any questions about what your program is required to submit. And these are additional program documents that we ask center programs to upload into CNP web. The CACFP questionnaire asks general information about your program that helps us complete your review. All programs will submit their most current CACFP in-house training records for all staff identified in their agreement as having CACFP duties. Remember that CACFP in-house training refers to the training that you give your staff annually on exactly how to perform CACFP duties at your business. We need to see proof that all CACFP staff, as well as their immediate supervisors, have received training on the topics of civil rights. And then we need to see proof that CACFP staff receive training on the other six required topics, but only if they are relevant to their CACFP duties. For programs with more than one physical site, we will need to see your three most current monitoring records. And if you are a sponsor of unaffiliated sites, you'll need to submit your sponsor site agreements. And if you're an at-risk after-school program, you'll need to submit documentation of enrichment or other education enrichment activities offered. For center programs, these are documents that we'll review on site. We'll be looking to ensure that you've hung our required postings in a prominent place where parents and participants can see them when they enter your center. All programs need to post the Injustice for All poster. We'll be looking for current WIC info for everyone except at risk after school programs and adult programs. And we'll be looking for the um, Building for the Future poster for everyone except for at risk after school programs. And we'll be looking to see that your license is posted if you're a program that's required to be licensed. For programs that enroll participants, we'll be looking at your income eligibility forms or enrollment records for all your sites, not just the sites we're visiting. This means that you'll need to bring the IEFs or enrollment paperwork from any other center sites to the site that we'll be visiting. We'll be asking for a roster of currently enrolled participants for the month we come on site. If you have an adult program, we'll ask to see individualized plans of care for your participants. We'll ask all programs for a copy of their current posted menus for all age groups served for the day we're on site, as well as grain labels or recipes for all grains served during the day we're on site, and labels for yogurt and ready to eat cereal if you serve yogurt or cereal on that day. We'll ask you to show us how you document daily attendance and point of service meal counts, and we'll also confirm that you're trying to collect participant racial and ethnic data. When we're on site, we also have to observe all of your participants during a meal service. We ensure that all age groups served are getting creditable meals and snacks, so we're looking at how much food you're serving to ensure you're serving at least the minimum required serving sizes. And we're making sure that participants are getting the correct kind of milk for their age group. If you serve infants, we're ensuring that you're offering at least one kind of iron fortified infant formula and that you're serving iron fortified infant cereal. We're also ensuring that you have a doctor and or parent note on file for any food substitutions. Lastly, we have to check for the overall health and safety of your facility, especially in regards to food safety and sanitation. So we'll be checking your refrigerator and freezer temperatures, and we'll be inspecting your kitchen, food service areas, and food storage areas for cleanliness. 
We'll be observing all your staff to ensure that they're following good food safety and hand washing procedures. When we review sponsors of family child care providers, we ask them to upload proof of disbursement for the review month for all their sponsored providers. We also ask for proof of actual administrative expenses charged to CACFP for the review month and new this year as a result of our federal review, we'll be requesting your cost allocation plans for any programs that allocate a portion of their general expenses to CACFP. Home sponsors are also required to upload several documents for each of their providers that we chose for the date of review. We need to see copies of their sponsor home agreements, their menus, meal counts and attendance records for the month of review, and the provider's three most recent monitoring records. Home sponsors also have to upload proof of annual training and proof of dis distributing appeals procedures for all of their sponsored providers. Other documents that home sponsors have to upload includes proof of annual in-house training for CACFP administrative staff and monitors and a homes questionnaire. When we come on site to review a sponsor of family child care providers, we'll be looking at completed IEFs and proof of income for all providers who were tier one by household income during the review month. We'll also be looking at IEFs for all tier one eligible children claimed by tier two mixed providers during the month of review. Additional documents we'll look at for providers chosen for review include your copies of their enrollment forms for the children they claim during the review month. Additional requirements that we look at on site for home sponsors include looking for the and justice for all poster at the sponsor's main office and doing unannounced visits to providers chosen for the review. We request a program monitor to accompany us on these unannounced visits to help put the providers at ease since they aren't usually familiar with us at the state agency and we know that it can be stressful having a stranger come into their home. When we're at the provider's home, we need to ensure that they have menus posted for all age groups served and that they have the required postings hung in a prominent place where parents can see when they drop off their children for the day. We checked to ensure that they have a copy of their sponsor home agreement on file, as well as current enrollment forms for all the kids in their care. We verify that providers are keeping attendance records and are taking meal counts by the end of the day. We check for the overall health and safety and sanitation of the home, including checking the refrigerator and freezer temperatures. We also observe a meal service to ensure that the provider is meeting meal pattern requirements, which includes checking their grain labels and or recipes for all grain products served that day and labels or crediting documentation for those commercial products I talked about earlier, if they're applicable. Now that you're more familiar with the documents that we need for your review, we're going to take a step closer and look exactly how you upload these needed documents into CNP Web. I just want to mention how important it is that you separate your review documents and label your review documents accurately so we can find the information we need easily and efficiently. I've listed some examples on the screen of ways to label your review documents so that we as state staff know exactly what we're looking for. Okay, next I'm going to provide a tour of the CNP Web e-review system, including how to upload review documents in the system, how you can track your progress on your review, what your review report looks like once they're generated by CNP Web, and how to submit your corrective action plans and corrections to those plans in the system. Some of you may remember we discussed the e-review system last year. However, it took much longer to push out than anticipated, but it's finally ready. You may notice some of the screenshots today show older dates. Please know that the process is exactly the same regardless of the dates on your screen. It's important for you to be aware that we will be starting reviews within the new system starting with the 2024 agreement year. So all reviews scheduled October 1st, 2023 and later will be in this new system. The pandemic, although extremely difficult, taught us that we can change some of our administrative review processes. 
To make the review process easier for the sponsor and the state agency, we will be asking for review documentation to be submitted within this new system. This will help reduce state agency time on site and make the review process more transparent. Our office looks forward to seeing all the wonderful work you are doing at your locations across the state. Sponsors are, who are due to be reviewed will still receive a notification email. However, the instructions for submitting review documentation will be different than years past, so please pay close look attention to those review notification letters. By now, all of you should be very familiar with CNP Web and the login screen. To access the e-review system, you're going to log in just like you normally would. You're going to click the current agreement year. So in our case, we would click 2024. And you will be brought to the sponsor summary screen. Some of you may have noticed something new this year. There is now an e-review button. This is how you will submit all your administrative review documents. See your administrative review as it progresses and how you will submit your corrective action plans if necessary. First, let's look into the administrative review process by clicking on the e-review log by sponsor. This is the e-review log screen. This gives you a quick look at where your administrative review is in the process. Let's look a little closer by clicking on the I action button. The e-review scheduling entry screen is completed by the state agency when we set up your review and we will update it as the review moves forward. The number one is the program year, which is the year your administrative review. So this will say 2024. Number two is the sponsor name. This is pretty easy, right? Number three is the review type. Most reviews will be a three-year institution review. Some larger sponsors may be on a two-year review cycle, so theirs will say two-year institution review. And follow-up means we visited a sponsor the previous year. And the, the CACFP re risk assessment tool indicated a revisit. So we are completing another administrative review the following year. Number four is the review status. This will tell you where your administrative review is in the process. Open means the reviewer has scheduled your review. In progress means the reviewer is actively working on your administrative review. In progress corrective action or CA, the reviewer has gone over the findings with the sponsor and the sponsor can now enter corrective action within CNP web. And closed means the plan of correction was complete and the review closure letter has gone out. Number five is the name of the state agency reviewer that your administrative review, administrative review has been assigned to. This will be the individual you will need to contact regarding anything to do with your administrative review. Number six is the date when all the pre-review documentation uploads are due by. This will be indicated in the review notification letter as well as here. Number seven is when the reviewer started working on the review. Number eight is the date of the exit interview where the reviewer will go over any findings and discuss the corrective action plan. Number nine is the date of the administrative review was closed, meaning the cap was received and approved. Number 10 is where the reviewer might make a comment regarding why we are revisiting. An example could be that we are following up from the previous year or if the center might be closed during winter break or etc. We're going to go back to the e-review log. Now we can see at a glance what those dates mean. Let's check out the review itself by clicking the select button. Welcome to the e-review summary screen. This is where you will upload all documentation that is requested in your administrative review notification letter. All you need to do is click on the blue folder and an upload box will appear. Once the upload box appears, click on the button that says upload documents. A window from your computer will appear. Navigate to where your saved documents are kept. Highlight the documents you wish to upload and click open. 
Once you hit OK, whatever you chose to upload appears in the box. You can look at the document by clicking on the I action button or the delete the document by clicking on the trash can action button. You can click, click OK to leave the upload box. Now you can see that nine documents I uploaded are available to view by clicking on the dark blue page button. By clicking on that dark blue button, we are now able to view all the e-review documents. The e-review system provides a date stamp of when documents were uploaded and who uploaded them. Please make sure all uploaded documents are clearly labeled. This is extremely important because once the document is uploaded, neither you or the state agency can change the name of the file. So for example, if every document is labeled with a number sequence, rather than a description of what is in that file, then every time we want to look at your meal counts, we must open every file, or we must remember that your meal counts are file 78569. Sometimes sponsors will upload 70 documents or more for us to review. Due to the frequency of this occurrence this past year, if we see a significant number of files uploaded without file descriptions, we will delete the files and ask that you upload them again correctly. This may seem harsh, but sponsors in the state agency alike are working understaffed, and we need to be respectful of one another's time. If the sponsors in the state agency's file descriptions are clear, it makes for a smoother review process for everyone. Please be aware if you are in the upload box and you delete one of your uploads by clicking on the trash can icon, it will remove that document from the folder. There is no back button once a file is deleted. The file is gone. Click OK to leave the box and return to the review summary screen. So we are back to the review summary screen. The blue highlighted section is the sponsor level review. The yellow highlighted section is the site level review. If you click on the box next to the blue arrow, it will take you to the institution review screen. The institution review screen shows the institution level review sections. The green bar means that those questions have been answered by the reviewer. The red bar means those questions have not been completed yet. A yellow circle indicates a finding. So if we look at the institution records, you can see that I answered three of the questions and one of them indicated a finding. If you want to see specific questions, click on the blue review section hyperlinks. So we are going to click on the institution records questions. We can see that there are three institution records questions. By clicking on the green pencil next to each question, you will have the ability to see and read each question and answer. So here you can see question 1002 says the institution maintains all program records required by USDA, as well as all records required by the state agency. The reviewer has marked this question as non-compliant and wrote a description of why the institution is non-compliant. It says records not available to reviewer on the day of review. The reviewer has made this a finding by providing the description. CACFP records necessary for the review must be available to the reviewers on the days of the review. Unavailable records include missing income eligibility forms. As a result of this finding, disallowances are outlined in the attached report. Next is the federal citation which supports the finding. So it says 7 CFR 226.10 D, all accounts and records pertaining to the program shall be made available upon request to representatives of the state agency, of the department, and of the U.S. Government Accountability Office for audit or review at a reasonable time and place. And the corrective action description says, provide a detailed procedure that will ensure that all records are available for review. The procedure should include when and how the records are maintained, the person or job title responsible for the oversight of this procedure, and at least two people who work on site that will have immediate access to records. This section may also specify if this was a repeat finding from your previous CACFP administrative review. So this process is very clear. You can see the review question. You can see how the reviewer answered it. If it's determined as a finding, you will see a description of why it was determined a finding along with the federal citation to back it up 
and you will see what is needed to correct the finding. It may seem complicated now, but once you're more familiar with the e-review system, I think everyone will appreciate the transparency here. If at any point you want to go back to the institution level review summary screen, click on the top hyperlink. This institution just happens to be an independent center, so it has the same name for the institution level and the site level. This is what the review summary screen would look like for a daycare home sponsor. You can clearly see the sponsor level review hyperlink with the blue arrow and the provider level review with the yellow arrow. And again here, this is what a sponsor of centers and daycare homes may look like. The blue arrow would take you to the sponsor level questions and the yellow would take you to the center or provider level questions. As I said earlier, this new software allows for the review process to be more transparent. You can see all the questions and the answers for all of the providers and centers. Following that left side bar down, I clicked on the facility selection link. This shows you the facilities we selected for the review, the claim amount that the site had during the review period, and what type of program it is. The daycare homes provider section screen is very similar to the facility selection screen. You can see the providers that have been selected, their claim amounts, their capacity, their tier level, and their eligibility determination. If you continue down the left sidebar, you can see that there is a note section. If you click on the notes hyperlink, it will show you any notes the state agency reviewer has made. For this review, you can see I made a note that the daycare was going to be closed on April 10th. Similarly, if you click on the technical assistance hyperlink, you will be able to see any technical assistance the state agency reviewer has provided. You can see here that I documented providing ounce equivalents TA to the institution. Last but certainly not least is commendations. As you can see here, there are several commendations provided by the reviewer. If you click on the action button for each item, you will be able to see what the commendation was for. One commendation was for the menu quality and the other was for training. All commendations written here are automatically entered into the administrative review report. Once the report has been completed, the state agency reviewer will schedule, schedule an exit interview to go over the review and discuss any findings. Once the exit interview is complete, the child nutrition administrative assistant will email the institution the administrative review report. As you can see, the administrative review report now includes the commendations and the technical assistance we discussed earlier, as well as the findings and corrective action needed. Due to an audit we received from USDA, the administrative review report will also include the citations we, the citations we mentioned earlier. With all this information now included in the report, some review reports might be quite long. Please do not be discouraged by that. A long report does not mean a bad review. Once your institution receives your administrative review via email, you can log into CNP Web, click on e-reviews, and click on corrective action responses. The corrective action response page will list all the findings in the review report. The blue arrow is showing the corrective action due date for each finding. The orange arrow shows the upload button where you can upload any needed backup documentation for your corrective action plan. For example, for the finding regarding daily menus not being available, we may request you upload four weeks worth of completed menus. The green arrow is showing where you respond to each finding by clicking the pencil action button. Let's click on the pencil and see what each review finding looks like. The green arrow is showing the finding and whether the finding is seriously deficient or a repeat. The orange arrow is showing what the state agency wants for corrective action and the due date for the corrective action for the finding. And the blue arrow is where the institution will respond to the corrective action. 
There is also another upload button in the far right hand corner for any supporting documentation. Once you have written your corrective action plan, click save. For each finding, you must state what procedures will be implemented to address the finding, who will address the findings, please list personnel responsible for this task, when will the procedure for addressing the findings be implemented? Please provide a timeline for implementation of the procedure. Will the procedure be done daily, weekly, monthly, or annually? And when the implementation plan will begin? Where is the corrective action plan documentation retained? And who will have access to it? And how will staff and if applicable facilities or providers be informed of the new policies and procedures? Also, you'll include any additional supporting documentation that was requested in the corrective action plan. Once you have saved your corrective action plan response, you will now see a blue check mark stating a response has been submitted. The reviewer will look over the response. If it needs further information, the reviewer will send it back to you in CNP Web for further information. Did you notice the blue check mark has disappeared? The absent blue check mark means that you have work to do. Since CNP Web does not send email notification when it's pending corrections, the state agency staff will send you a generic email stating you have corrections pending in CNP Web. You will need to log in to the e-review system to see what those corrections are, fix, and resave to submit. The reviewer will look over the response. If it needs further information, the reviewer will send it back to you with a due date. See the blue arrow. You then enter your new response in the open text box. See the green arrow. And here you will be able to expand on what you submitted previously. Once you are finished, click save. The reviewer will then look over the response and either send it back again or approve. Once the findings corrective action has been approved, you will see two blue check marks and an approved date on the corrective action response screen. Once all corrective action plans for all findings are approved, the administrative review will be closed and the institution will receive a review closure letter via email. Lastly, we just wanna talk about some helpful tips for success and reminders. Please refer to your review notification letter for important review details, such as paperwork due dates, who is doing your review, and what site and providers will be visiting on site. Go through the document checklist carefully so that you don't forget to submit needed information. Label your review document documents accurately when uploading them into CNP Web. If something unusual happened during the month of review, please let us know ahead of time. For example, Let's say you're a child care center program and you had a brand new child start attending during the month of review. You tried multiple times, but for whatever reason, you were just not able to collect a complete IEF for the child from the parent or guardian. Let's say that you added the child's name to your CACFP meal count records thinking you'd be getting their IEF completed, but then you didn't end up actually claiming the child's meals and snacks because you hadn't been able to collect the complete IEF. Please let us know about unusual situations like this ahead of time. In this case, just let us know that although you tried to add the child to your CACFP, you weren't able to collect their IEF, so you did not claim their meals and snacks or add them to your enrollment numbers, even though they were on your program records. Providing us with this information and clarification ahead of time will save us all time and avoid confusion, which is always good during reviews. If you have questions or need clarification about your reviews, please reach out to us. We know that CACFP has a lot of regulations and requirements and it can be overwhelming at times. So please feel free to call or email us anytime you have questions. We are here to support you. This is the Civil Rights Non-Discrimination Statement. Thank you for attending the CACFP Administrative Review Training today. If you have any questions, again, feel free to reach out to our office anytime. Please be aware, since this is a pre-recorded webinar, you will not receive a certificate for attending today. If you want to document this training, please create a dated sign-in sheet and have all attendees sign. We look forward to visiting your sites and seeing all the wonderful work you are doing. Take care.